Welcome to another commentary done by Digby. This is BSL Season 17 Hasu League semifinal, upper right hand corner. We have Dryas starting as the white Zerg, bottom right hand corner. We have Urban starting as the yellow Zerg. And this is on the map. Which actually, I'm wondering if this is going to favor Jiraiya overall, because Jiraiya's... We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. It's kind of actually an interesting thought. Do two-player maps or four-player maps in 1v1 favor 2v2 players? I would think 1v1 maps would favor 2v2 players. Kind of a side thought. But as far as 4v4, not it's, it's rare for a 2v2 player to run into... Not that I'm saying Jiraiya is like just a 2v2 specialist and nothing else. That is not my comment. I think Jiraiya has already proven by the depth he's gotten into into this league and the, the games that he's shown that he's also a very capable 1v1 player. But I actually want to comment that I feel, before anything else, let me sing a little bit of Jiraiya's praise here, that he's shown that playing 2v2 has given him a great deal of flexibility as far as build orders and execution, etc. Looks like he's going for a 9 pool. Urban going for, ooh, another 9 hatch. This time going to be in the strong position. So again, this isn't a 100% game winner overall. We do have the extractor being dropped on top of everything else, but this time Urban going to end up in the flip side of the build order advantage. Jiraiya is going to end up with the vision advantage. Now, it's possible that Jiraiya turns this into a sunken colony uh, quick hatchery play, but more likely than not, I st I, because he didn't go for overpool, I'm suspecting that he's going to try to produce the rapid initial zerglings. And what happens on the opposite side of the field for Urban is he ends up with more zerglings as they're, I think it's right about here, his zergling spawn, and he ends up with a larger number and can kind of do a counter swarm. Ends up potentially being a counter to this build. We'll see if my commentator... <laughs> Remembrance of how all of these play off is correct. But basically, Urban's relying on the distance of the map to buy him time to get the Zerglings out. But he's certainly going to be producing Zerglings himself. So the Zerglings are away. Hopefully I'm not off on this. We've got the Larva that are in fact being built. is going to be disappointed, I think. Well, maybe not. Because he's going to see this later spawning pool. That might lead him to believe, okay, I was maybe up against a 12th hatch. Wonder if he has those timings down. Overlord spawns, the Zerglings are being produced. The Hatchery can take a little bit of damage, but right now the thing for Urban is that he's got more Larva to work with and a little bit of a, a smaller economy, but just having the additional Larva ends up working out for him. And it looks like my timing was off. The Zerglings, in fact, do manage to get in the natural expansion. So these Zerglings are gonna have to flee a little bit. But through the long term, Urban should have more Zerglings right at this stage and be able to swarm and yeah, pin these Zerglings in which gives him an advantage here in the early game. He's got Zergling speed building. Although the Zergling's able to sneak their way in. I keep thinking like this is the way that the build orders work, but apparently I'm just off a little bit all the way around. So Urban's gonna have to wait for that Zergling speed to really cap the advantage. In the meantime, Jiraiya not out of this yet because he does have a drone advantage and he's got all this time he's buying himself, pinning these Zerglings, dealing with the counter Zerglings in his main. And he's already teched a lair. He's got a sunken colony. He's got a spire behind this. So Urban really needs to double down because he's gone nowhere to lair. He's got to flood this with an overwhelming amount. And with some solid drone drills and a couple Zerglings, potentially Jiraiya can defend this, but it's going to be tough. He's dropping a second sunken colony already. Both to repel those Zerglings, but also to provide some defense against the Spire. The Zerglings, however, in route, they now have speed, and they are in large numbers. So we'll see if Urban's able to execute. Stereotypically, this is exactly the situation you want to be in as Urban, though, with this precise build order. So moving in, nice defense thus far. Urban cannot step off the gas. The drone's currently delayed, and Urban getting repelled was able to delay a good amount of mining, but interestingly enough from Urban, swapped it up. Instead of pressing with additional sunken colonies, he did a round of drones to get a worker advantage, has moved to Creek Colony and dropped an evolution chamber. So he wants to try to shift into two hatch layer defense, and he's going to go ahead and camp out that natural expansion as far as an adjustment here. So first of all, Amazing kudos to Jiraiya 
for defending. But secondarily, let's see if Urban's able to pull off the turnaround. The Zerglings actually need to buy some time right this second. As the Spires, or as, as the Spore Colonies come into place. So two of them going to get built. The Zerglings actually sneaking in, trying to threaten to maybe draw the Mutalus back. They are able to draw the Mutalus back, which is huge. So that's buying some additional times. And on top of this, this is time that a hatchery is not being grabbed. This Overlord trying to make it back to the Spore Colonies to negate additional losses. This is going to be the last Spore that comes in line. But this is actually plenty for Urban to defend both the main and the natural. Now, Dryad going to go ahead and grab his natural, but Urban has surged very, very rapidly up to a 19 drone count. I'm not sure if this Overlord was able to track all of that. But Urban actually now at double the worker count of Jiraiya. With some gas in between. Let's see if he can transition this into a game win. Interesting play from Urban. And this is what I love to see out of him. He just has all sorts of craziness like this. This Overlord going to make it back. So the Mutalisk's not going to be able to move out in open field. And pick get uh, free kills in that regard. Urban sending out an exploratory Zergling. To check out the status of his opponent's hatcheries, etc. No second gas as of yet. There is that spore colony to defend. <coughs> Urban needs to continue to apply. Yeah, keep pumping up the drones. Saturate the patches. Get the... Ooh, this is interesting. He's actually going for plus one carapace behind this. And he's dropped... Look at this. Dropping a Hydralis den. And hiding it away from that overlord on the corner. I missed whether that Zergling made it all the way into the main. It looks like one. Uh, there's one kill on that Mutalisk. He might have been able to push all the way forward. Plus one Carapace now engaging. That is one of the advantages you get regardless when you're able to hold the hatchery. And I've seen Urban do this time and time again on occasion. Third hatchery dropping interior to base. But it's hard to pull off a, a good Hydralisk transition. But Jiraiya might have eyes of this once he sees that lack of that natural expansion gas. So he's going to walk in. Now he sees that Hydralis then. And now what he needs to do is he needs to get a bulk amount of Mutalisks up to be able to punish this and also punish the lack of mobility of the Hydralisks as quickly as possible. Single Zergling able to sneak through the gaps actually might be able to get a drone kill here at the natural. So some bonus there from Urban. The drones trying to defend themselves. It looks like that drone is going to survive. Going to sneak into that gas to be absolutely sure of it. So third, so now this is three hatch mutalisk, or sorry, three hatch hydralisk <laughs> with a maxed out drone saturation off two bases and plus one carapace actually landing before the plus one flyer carapace overall. Hydralisks can produce more rapidly in smaller numbers, but mutalisks eventually do outscale them. Third hatchery being built. So the question is, does Urban hit, has he hit the timing where he's going to have enough hydralisks to repel the Mutalisks and maintain, and I don't know, make some sort of transition out of that. It looks like he's dropping Lair underneath this. The Mutal the, the Hydralisks in this meantime, I, I presume he's just going to start building. He's got the full saturation of drones. Well, minus one. So I presume he's just going to continue with the Hydralisks over the long term. Maybe go to Lair, try to get some Lurkers out in the field, and we'll see if he, if he does at some point go for an attempted transition to Spire in the midst of this. We already have a Queen's Nest dropping from Jiraiya. Single Zergling able to sneak back through. I don't know if Jiraiya is going to have the wherewithal to go ahead and click it to see the armor upgrade. Zergling sneaking all the way up, sees the Queen's Nest. And now, Urban making his way out with his group of Hydralisks. They do have all of the upgrades. He's working on plus one spines as well. And I don't know that Jiraiya has enough Mutalisks to contend. He's going to, yeah, eats a lot of free damage right there. Dropping a defensive creep colony. I don't know if this is going to be in time. I don't think he has the raw Mutalisk count to repel Urban. Trying to drop a defensive sunken. Urban hesitating briefly, waiting for the additional Hydralisks to come in. Now going up, he's going to be able to engage. Focus firing down the Mutalisks. And now it's just basically a damage race. The Mutalisks trying to micro in between. Sunken Colony's been picked out. Second one's morphing. More Mutalisks drawing. More reinforcements making their way up. Unfortunately, Urban not doing the best job of being able to retarget the damaged Mutalisks. And so he is getting repelled. Sunken Colony back up. But he's also dropping an additional hatcher here at the 6 o'clock location. 
Queen's Nest is up. Can he make it to Hive? Double, is that double evolution chamber? Double evolution chamber. Second one is remaining silent, however. Zergling, tr or sorry, a single Hydro is trying to make its way up. I'm not sure if that was a miss rally or was just trying to scout. I think it was just trying to scout overall. Plus one armor on the Mutalus. The Mutalus is going to go ahead and make their way up. That is double spore. Here's the problem for the Hydralisks right this second is they're just not very mobile in comparison. Spire attempting to get dropped. Spore Colony going to get wiped out before the Hydralisks are able to make it into the main. But I don't think a drone got picked out. Worker count has just evened. And on top of that, Dry a halfway to Hive. Third base is up, however, for Urban, so it's going to be potential macro with a later Spire. Lurker Tech. Lurker Tech. And everything else. We'll see if the Hive turns into a greater Spire. If it turns, we could, we're going to see everything in this match. Potentially Defilers. Unfortunately, Dark Swarm does not help out versus Mass Hydralisks. Creep Colony defensively being dro being dropped to, I presume, turn into a Spore. Dry going to check out that 6 o'clock location. This is the problem with Hydralisks, though, is, is they're very, very slow. So I don't know that they're going to be able to get to 6 o'clock location in time to provide sufficient support. Supply count's actually even, which suggests, I believe, that Dry is ahead. comes down to a good amount of micromanagement. More Hydralisks grouping out. We have two Lurkers being morphed. The Hydralisks now scooting out towards that third base. Hive tech is up. We are going to see that mutation to... Interesting, a mutation to Greater Spire. This might actually blow up. I have a feeling this might blow up and dry his face, where he's going to try to go Greater Spire. And because of the Muta switch... It's going to be problematic. Urban a little bit delayed in his response. Spore Colony down is not going to lose the hatchery, but he has lost the defensive spore. Also, Dryan now knows that 6 o'clock base is in fact functioning. Now here's the thing. We got a Spire. If a few Mutalisks get produced, they could potentially counter Guardians should they be produced. Evolution Chamber dropping, so if Dryan tries to switch back and go for Ground Army, that's an advantage. The Lurkers, oh, nice pick off of the drones in transition here. Really abusing the lack of mobility. Two additional drones also going to get wiped out. That's huge at this stage. Jiraiya, oh no, additional drones. Urban falling apart a bit with the rallies here. And Jiraiya getting maximum value. So picking out a full wave right now. And now that Mutalist fleet might be too much to contend with. We have a few Guardians morphing. Above that natural expansion, Hydralisks already have a mobility problem. We also have... I wonder if we're going to see a switch back to Zergling, potentially. The Hydralisks actually spot the Guardians morphing. They're going to press in. Are the upgrades sufficient? Plus two armor. Here's the thing. The Hydralisks move here to engage this. That still opens up the Mutalisks. Now they're seeing the Scourge actually move this direction. They're going to chase down the Guardians, able to get those Guardians. And now kind of that might counter... The earlier losses, and Jiraiya going to try to engage a ground fight. Those Guardians trying to defend themselves. The Hydralisks able to get on top of them. Looks like they're going to be able to peck them off. And I'm wondering if that is going, with this catastrophic loss of resources, if that negates the earlier losses. But the two creep colonies here at the 6 o'clock have not been engaged. The Zerglings moving out. Dark Swarm with Zerglings will work against the Hydralisks with the Zerglings underneath, but there's not a large pocket to defend. So all the Hydralisks have to do is move out of that Dark Swarm. These are highly upgraded... Hydralisks and Overlord going to get picked out as well. A Defiler, or sorry, a Lurker morphing here. And now we've got two Sunken Colonies and a potential a, a attack force. The Spores did manage to morph in between. And the Mutalisk count looking a little bit dry. In the meantime, upper left and corner dry, able to get a base up. But Urban kind of in a contained situation. Plague upgrading on the opposite side, though. Where's the Defiler mound? Plague upgrading, and that can be a huge shift. A single Hydralisk is going to find this upper left-hand base before that Nidus Canal completes. The Lurkers burrowing in between. Lurker versus Zergling. Lurkers, or uh, Zerglings, get absolutely obliterated. So the Zerglings finding the Lurker is going to go have to back out. It looks like, ooh, the Defiler gets picked off as well. And now, 
Urban gonna charge top left, wipe everything out. Nidus down, cancellation of Nidus, I believe. No, I think it was wiped out. A couple Zerglings being produced, but that's not gonna be sufficient. Urban may be overcommitting some attack forces here to take out top left. But it looks like he's now 20 supply up and has taken control of this match. And a wild one. Adrenal upgrades on the way. And Adrenal, plus all of the upgrades that are already in place, is going to be very, very difficult for Jiraiya to contend with. Additional Nidus Canal building. I think he's going to try to do the sneaky creep thing. Urban wise to it, though, and leaving Troop there. He's going to go ahead and plop down a hatchery bottom left. Guardians have morphed at the 6 o'clock. The Hydra is trying to make a beeline to defend that location. A couple Zerglings have managed to spring through as well. So this is going to be some additional drones that are wiped out. A couple Scourge have been produced to try to deal with this. Lurker planted, able to deal with the Zerglings, but that hatchery taking a lot of heavy hits. <coughs> Hydra's just now moving up, but at this stage, it is Urban's game to lose. Speaking of Urban, thank you for the raid. Guardians wiped out a bunch of Zerglings out on the front, but we got these two very beefy Lurkers there to deal with it. And all of a sudden, Jiraiya locked to two bases. This is usually a a potential mine-out point <coughs> in stereotypical matches. Finally, the, an Overlord there to push the Lurkers back, which might open up the Zerglings to make a run for it. Hydralisks rapidly making their way forward. There's no Overlord speed, and the Guardians have overextended, so they're going to get picked off once again. The Zerglings moving up, but just as the Lurkers are planted, trying to... Is that Overlord going to get... The Overlord's wiped out, so the Zerglings going to get picked off. The Zerglings are not defended by Lurker Splash, and Urban all of a sudden taking firm control here. There wasn't a Sneaky Nidus drop behind all of this. And Urban now on four bases. The Zerglings have managed to surge through. They might be able to pick off this bottom left if they were aware of it. I don't know that they're aware of it, though. And Urban soon to be at four bases, up massive amounts of supply, and about to cap the final upgrades across the board. So Urban with an amazing... Okay, this Zergling might be able... So this could be another switch. The Lurker's just morphing, though. So the Zerglings finding the hatchery bottom left. They're going to try to swarm in. But the Lurkers are, have morphed just in the nick of time. So the drones might get wiped out, but this is going to be a base that stands and the Zerglings just getting absolutely obliterated. Jiraiya in trouble. For all of his 2v2 expertise, I'm wondering if he's ever seen a ZVZ go like this. Zerglings trying to go in and engage, but honestly, with 1-1 one, one versus soon to be 3-3, three, three, and in just larger numbers, Urban is just outproducing Jiraiya. He's got four bases, the entire six. He's gonna, looks like Jiraiya kind of fanning out just to try to do what he can. He's kind of in desperation mode at this stage. Honestly, in not too long, he might be down to one base. <coughs> and Urban has expanded absolutely everywhere in the meantime. Now, gonna go ahead and get some of the free damage across everywhere else. Still lurkers in place. And just Zerglings to try to defend, which isn't gonna cut it. This is kind of interesting because we're going to see the late game Lurker, the, the, uh, oh, actually it's going to be something Colony. I was wondering if it was going to be a Spore to defend. We see a pocket of Zerglings at the 12 o'clock, maybe? Rally Point being engaged once again. A big plague over that Rally Point, catching a lot of the Overlords, so Mutalus could wander in to do some damage right there, but the rest of the Zerglings getting cleaned up by Lurkers. This is honestly kind of a last stand by Jiraiya. Maybe the Plague Overlords, if they just get wiped out. How many Overlords is that that got plagued? That's a significant amount. So 700. 48 supply, potentially, to even things up. Overlords moving in. I bet they wish they actually remained uh, Mulus right at this stage to do kind of... It's almost like a Science Vessel pickoff, but with whatever else. Urban, in the meantime, countering at the 12 o'clock location. Is going to do this. What? Oh, it's a standardly a Zealot trick, but with Hydralisks here at the 12 o'clock. And if he just holds the high ground, should be able to wipe out this hatchery. And honestly, if Jiraiya cannot cap this hatchery, that is going to be game. In the meantime, Guardian's getting cleaned up here. They're trying to go in and get something done, but they're getting cleaned up by Hydralisks on the ground. Looks like the Hydralisks are cleaned up, but Lurker Eggs attempting to morph. Cancellation there from Urban. 
across the board, just occupying those Zerglings momentarily. Another Swarm counter Zerglings moving out. Now keep in mind, these Zerglings, level 3 Carapace, it looks like they did not get the level 2 weapons upgrade. But that Carapace advantage, and they have the Adrenal upgrade, which means they're going to clear out this hatchery very, very quickly. Maybe a Plague, but that's going to plague his own building here. So that's it. Yeah, so Plague's the Zerglings. No hatchery right there. Urban also taking his mineral only, trying to deny that. Jiraiya scrambling everywhere to try to make things work. The Mutalist, yeah, here's the Mutalist going to go ahead and try to take out those Overlords. But it looks like they found that third. Going to plague that hatchery as well. Keep in mind, plague on Zerg buildings because they're biological. Still end up doing a lot of damage. A Dark Swarm drop to try to protect some of the units. Urban has stuff to lose is the problem right now. And Urban and uh, Jiraiya does not. Right now, it looks like rather than going for the Overlords, he's trying to deal with the Lurkers. There's Lurkers underneath there. They're, again, that's zero damage. That 12 o'clock base still not established. More Zerglings moving out. But Urban just needs to go ahead and step up the macro here, and he should be able to close this game out. More Zerglings moving up. There is a Lurker under this swarm. There's an Overlord to spot it. A Guardian trying to do what he can. Guardians not affected by Dark Swarm. Counter Mulus out in the air here. And Jiraiya now throwing everything in the kitchen sink to try to slow Urban down. But Urban on four bases. And honestly, even if he loses this base here at the interior at 3 o'clock, Jiraiya not being able to hold that 12 o'clock, that's going to be it. So the Guardian trying is going to be able to take out that hatchery. But there's still more Mutalus. Jiraiya still trying to stem the tide at this stage, trying to build that 12 o'clock location while he just attacks offensively. The Zerglings trying to swarm in. But Mutalists overhead and Lurkers down below very quickly clearing them out. More Zerglings and more Mutalists moving forward. Jiraiya allowing his offense to be his defense right this second. Trying to keep Urban occupied where while he go while he tries to establish that 12 o'clock base. Recognizing that he's at a severe deficit economically overall. Double the supply right now though for Jiraiya. Or sorry for Urban. But a good portion of that is in Workers. Nidus Canal, or sorry, additional hatchery being plopped bottom left. Zerglings are going to try to swarm into the 6 o'clock, but again, they're going to be met by those lurkers that are highly upgraded. So they're finding nothing, and Jiraiya GG's. Well played by Urban in game three to take the match. And Jiraiya is certainly going to be scratching his head after this one. Wow. Great play. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.